A cute small car starts in the most famous rally in the world and becomes a legend. The Mini Cooper wins at the Monte Carlo rally 50 years ago. Three red and white works cars with about 100 brake horsepower go as outsiders into the race. In the end, they achieve places one, four, and seven under the toughest competition. The experts are baffled. At the wheel of the winning car with the star number 37, Patty Hopkirk, an Irish jester, then as now. Can't hear you. <laughs> Already in the early 60s, Hopkirk is convinced of the racing qualities of the Mini and switched from an Austin Healey 3000 to the small car. Well, technically it was very far ahead of its time because it was really one of the first cars with front wheel drive, front engine, engine over the driving wheels, and it had a lot of horsepower uh, pro, to, pro rata to the size of the car. Because most of the powerful cars were much bigger cars. And, uh, the narrow roads and the snow plows, the fact that the snow plows had left the roads even more narrow was an advantage for the car. With an old and a new Mini from the first generation in Monte Carlo on the way to a historic site, the Col de Turini. Switchbacks to the 1,607 meter high Col de Turini are considered demanding in the test of the Monte Carlo rally. Then and now. From the beginning, the Mini is considered as a rally car with good chances. With the 1963 Cooper S, overall victory in the prestigious rally is targeted. Since then, the Mini Cooper, whether old or new, is seen as the sports car of the little man and promises one thing, driving pleasure. The last Mini Cooper from the first generation delivered a brisk 63 horsepower and scratched at the 150 mark at the maximum speed. The same road 50 years ago. There were difficult conditions on the narrow mountain road. In the infamous Night of the Long Knives, the little Brit shows what it has in it. It copes best with the snow chaos and shows the stronger horsepower competitors its taillights. Fitted with a one-liter engine, Cooper evened out its performance shortcomings with cornering finesse and front-wheel drive. At that time, driving a works car, Rauno Altonen, the flying fin or rally professor. With his analytical approach, he explains how to move a Mini fast in adverse conditions. How can you precisely position the car sideways? That was the basic factor. A wheel that is not in the drift cannot create a sight drift. Therefore, it was necessary that one could drive the car in a light drift. Downhill, one is still fast in a classic Mini. Patty Hopkirk was known as a fearless downhill driver in the 60s. Before the rally, however, the Irishman got a surprise on a downhill run. We were practicing on this call. I was with uh, Ron Crellin, and uh, we were up and down, up and down. It started to snow very badly at night, and we were really bored and looking forward to dinner and having a nice gin and tonic with some friends, and I suddenly saw some red lights in front. And um, I said, oh, that'll be great. It'll be the Germans or the Scandinavians. I'll just catch them up. And I had everything on this Mini. We had studded tires, heated windscreens, everything. And I couldn't catch these lights really going like hell downhill. And I said, this guy, these guys really know what they're at. And eventually we caught them up on a straight and passed them. And it was two nuns and a two CV <laughs> coming down, having been up to see the vicar at the top of the mountain, I think. <laughs> So it always gave me a great love for De Chevaux. On roads such as those at the Col de Turini, one quickly succumbs to rally fever. Without power steering, this means hard work in the old Mini. By contrast, the newer one is considerably easier. The last Mini from the first generation is considered an investment tip. 
one would have to invest more than 8,000 euros for a good specimen, for now. 50 years since the mini victory in the Monte Carlo Rally, a legend on four small wheels that can be found inexpensively today.